हेलो टू ऑल माय स्टोरी लवर्स वेलकम बैक इन स्टोरी टाइम चैनल आई एम पल्लवी रीडिंग इंटरेस्टिंग स्टोरी बुक्स फॉर यू टुडे आई एम रीडिंग वाइज एंड अदरवाइज रिटन बाय द ग्रेट सुधा मूर्ति टुडे आई एम रीडिंग द चैप्टर टेंथ अ मैन टू क्लेवर बाय हाफ इन दिस बुक सुधा मूर्ति शेयर्स हर एक्सपीरियंस इन हर लाइफ Now let's go through the experience. A few years ago, when the Infosys Foundation was still in its infancy, people were not aware of the kind of the work we were trying to do. Our organization work at the grassroots level, mainly with village school masters whom we approach voluntarily although infosys the company had already made a name for itself in the field of business the foundation was housed in two small rooms on the third floor of infosys towers and it still is even today our obscurity was heightened by the fact that there wasn't a single plaque announcing our presence the security men would confront about staff frequently any decent establishment connected to infosys should have a large sign board with a brass lettering if not a stately banner they would say right from its inception the foundation focus on redressing the grievances of village people especially children so that we could help them envision a bright and prosperous future comparable to that of their urban counterparts it is well known that in our country the rural urban divide runs deep the life of village children is devoid of the activities that are taken for granted by our city children the simple pleasure of modern life watching a cartoon show on television listening to popular hindi film song or even reading a book at leisure are rare luxuries in villages a lack of basic facilities forces village boys and girls to while away their time uselessly having observed these aspects of village life at close quarters i decided that one of the primary goals of the foundation should be to launch a project titled a library for each village i feel libraries play an important role in the lives of children the citizen of tomorrow as i was raised in a middle class family in a small town i was well aware of the importance of books and knowledge in the life of a student in my childhood i had limited access to books and it was then that i had envisioned starting free libraries offering unlimited access to the world of books as soon as i had been named trustee of the foundation i knew i had to take the first step towards fulfilling my desire to build libraries for village children reading has many advantage it is not only a useful hobby but also help us imbibe better qualities keeping this in mind the trustees plan to establish libraries that contain books in the regional language and not the textbooks that the children were using in school simple illustrated interesting books that could be read without anybody's help were thus selected for these libraries in this manner the foundation would sow the seeds of love for reading in the village of karnataka with sufficient nurturing and caring the project has grown from the tiny sapling into a huge wide reaching banyan tree more than 4000 such libraries have been established all over the state the books have succeeded in putting a smile on the faces of village children 
who discovered a new world opening up before them. A hot afternoon when I was sitting in my room trying to come up with some innovative ideas for the foundation's project, I noticed the silhouette of a man standing outside the glass door of my office. He was barely visible among the cartons of books and the jungle of colorful wrapping paper strewn all over the floor. I carried on with my work which required concentration. It was one of those days when my eagerness to complete the work on hand had made me give up all thoughts of quick lunch or midday siesta. Suddenly, I was startled by a loud knock on the door. The stranger walked in without even a nominal, May I come in? Is this the foundation office? He asked abruptly. Yes, I answered. Are you one of the staff members of the foundation? I nodded. He looked puzzled. Perhaps he had expected to see a fancy office with a fancy receptionist. And here was I wearing the sort of simple cotton sari that did nothing to disclose my identity. When the man arrived, I had been engrossed in dispatching some last-minute package while also writing an introductory proposal for new project. A disheveled person in a tiny cabin amid a maze of paper and piles of books was clearly not his idea of the Infosys Foundation he had come to visit. Without wasting time on introductions, he opened his bag and pulled out two Kannada books that looked like pamphlets. These are very good books for children, he announced. I have put in several years and based off my efforts to publish them. There is a great demand for these books all over Karnataka. You can buy this book for your library project. I just listen. Naturally, I wanted to see the books for myself to judge their quality, price, and most importantly, content. Would they prove useful and interesting to children in village schools? My silence seemed to irritate him. He said, I know Sudha Murthy and Narayana Murthy very well. Mrs. Murthy, who is the trustee of the foundation, asked me to come here. Otherwise, I don't do this kind of salesman job. It is because of the report we share that I have come so far to help her. I was amused. Have you known Mrs. Murthy for many years? I asked. Without any hesitation, he answered. I have known Sudha for a long time. She is my childhood friend. This was getting more and more curious. A man I was seeing for the first time claiming to be my childhood friend. Rather naughtily, I asked, but Sudha is from Dharwad and you seem to be from Bangalore. How is that she is your childhood friend? Now he looked quite surprised. Do you address your boss by her first name? It is not good etiquette. So what if she is from Dharwad? She used to come to Bangalore quite often to her aunt's house, which is next to ours even now. Lord Almighty, I thought, my Keith and Keen had never crossed the Tungabhadra River, which divides the old Mysore state from northern Karnataka. So I was indeed surprised to know about this aunt who was his neighbor. He went on, Sudha has always treated me like her elder brother. She doesn't have any brothers. You see, when Murthy wanted to start Infosys, she came to me for advice. Recently, she told me she wanted to buy 100 copies of each of my books. She knows my caliber. She told me to give these books here and collect the money. 
आई हैव टू गो टू द कन्नड़ा साहित्य मीटिंग वेर दे आर ऑनरिंग मी सो प्लीज हरी अप आई डिडेंट नो वेदर टू गेट अपसेट एंड शाउट एट हिम और जस्ट कैरी ऑन विथ द रूल्स आई डिसाइडेड टू प्ले अलॉन्ग विथ हिज डिसेप्शन वॉट काइंड ऑफ अ पर्सन इज मिसेस मूर्ति I ask perhaps im pishili he seem please at the opportunity to say more about his friendship oh she is a gentle lady though very quiet by nature he said during her ma nobody even knew about sudha in the class it was i who told her not to waste her time at home and do some social work i also introduced her to murthy and mediated their marriage was it an arranged marriage of course i even got their horoscope match that's why the couple is very fond of me even now and hold me in high regard after all it's because of me that she is here today this was too much he was not even being clever just careless mine was a love marriage neither of us was bother about horoscopes moreover i have always been an extrovert and was much noticed because i happened to be the only girl in class throughout my college days i am an m tech and not an ma social service was a cherished idea of murthy's and mine since the days of our friendship I could no longer stand this man's lying. I realized it was time to call his bluff. If I didn't disclose my identity now, who knew what he would be claiming next? Mister, I said sternly, there has to be an end to these lies of yours. I am Sudha Murthy, wife of Narayana Murthy. This is the first time that I am meeting you. How dare you talk about Murthy and me in this way? This is outrageous. Even if your books were good in terms of content and language, I would never buy them. Books are meant to reflect the thoughts and the personality of the author. By now, I know what kind of a person you are. Even if you are willing to offer your books free, I shall not accept them. Remember, only an honest human being can be a good writer he was shocked of course but before he could think of a suitable response he had walked out of the office disgusted frustrated and amazed at the world we live in do you like this experience